Is this Rod Race Vision? This thing, man, it is not... It's not good, I don't like it. I mean, I love it. But it's so weird. Just crawl in face first, huh? Rod Race is a mood. <laughs> Ruler of the Walls. Interesting. Ruler of Lies and Illusions. Rob Race. Rod Race. Poor Erwin. He has to put up with this over and over and over again. And he's always so calm. Yeah, it looks like it's attracted to heat sources or light sources. Right. I love this little crab rod icon on the map. Okay. That happened off screen, I guess. But pretty clever. Oh, it happens in a flashback. Of course. <laughs> So he has no effect on race. <laughs> Levi's face. Oh. Alright, I'm comforted. <laughs> kind of walking a line here. But faith in Erwin. Yeah, it's also not the most agile, right? Like, it literally is walking with its face. I guess this is their first operation under the new government, right? Starting off with using citizens as bait. They're gonna panic as soon as they see Crab Titan. Oh, no, no, no. They have no idea. Yeah, everyone's gotta be really restless. Is that guy assaulting her? What is he doing? You people. You deserve everything you have. Nice! <gasps> Quite the stack crew, yet again. I don't really think that'll be it. That was never gonna do it. So I've been trying to figure out Erwin and Levi's ideologies and, and where they intersect. One of the initial Levi moments that made him way more intriguing than I expected was in the forest arc where he tells Eren to make the best choice that he sees. That you can't really know the outcome, you just do what you feel is right. And you place your faith in that, and then you just let go. Like, you let go of what happens. Then I watched No Regrets, and turns out that Erwin says something like that to Levi. And that does seem to be part of Erwin's philosophy, to some extent, right? Like, these situations are so massively complex, he never knows the outcome. He just does what he feels gives him the best chance of success, and he does have some sort of values underlying that. While he does call on the soldiers, and in this case civilians, to play a role at great personal risk and expense, he doesn't see them as things to be manipulated, or as expendable, right? Like, he places a high value on all these things. One thing I'm wondering though, and this is sort of weird and probably going too far, but I can't help but feel like Levi is not quite sold. Like Levi has a little bit of dissatisfaction. While I think that deep down Erwin actually is really caring like Levi, I think he does a better job shelving that, putting it to the side, where Levi has more difficulty with that. Like Levi, in some sense, seems exhausted. He's extremely empathetic, extremely warm-hearted, surprisingly. And so I've seen a couple times where he's sort of like jabbing at Erwin to see Erwin show some remorse or show some fear or something like that, you know? And ultimately, Levi respects Erwin so much that that will always take priority. But I feel like he's still looking. He's still looking for an ideology in himself. You know, he's too smart to just settle into, like, subservience. He's always going to be learning and growing. Hanji having a great time, as usual. I'm glad she's all right. They got this stacked crew. Right, that's a good point. 
they're looking for something. They're looking for an excuse to tune out. I think that's what they want. They want to go back to their normal lives of complacency. I think that's what the show is saying. Oh god, that's so... Ugh, I don't like that. Yeah, she had everyone fooled. She had me fooled too. <laughs> I'm with you, Aaron. Ooh. Whoa. What is happening? Oh my god. I did not expect that from Aaron, but it's great. One thing I've been thinking about this show so far is that maybe on some level it's a meta commentary about audiences or common traits in people. Like in, in a way, I feel like the show is trying to get the audience to fall into something that is a sin of many of the characters in this world or many of the people of this world, which is similar to things that Aaron just described, like inflated sense of self-importance, which leads to the thinking that one's actions are justified just because it is from oneself. Thinking that we have a clear enough understanding of the world to choose the correct ends and to also know what the means are to those ends and then that justifies all means. There's this feeling it tries to give you of like, bad people must die now, you know? It leads you down this black and white path in other words and then slowly reveals the gray. The vehicle for that from writer to audience is protagonist, right? We fall right into the protagonist thing and so I think it's really easy to go with Aaron and because he's the central figure, to say that everything he does is good and that we have to root for him. And I think that is largely what happens watching this show. But Aaron has developed this really cool self-awareness where he's flipped that around, where he's, he's realizing the extent to which his views were self-centric and perhaps selfish and not expansive enough, not considering the full scope of the world. And so continuing with this over-analysis, I feel like that's, that's a chance or an invitation for a redemption from that. It's like, yeah, we did go a little bit too far, right? We did sort of root for people to stop breathing, but there's still a chance to make it right, sort of. There's still a chance for a more nuanced understanding of, of the world. My instinct about about the writing largely is that there's a trolling element to it. It tries to lead you down certain paths only to like whack you, you know, like to hit you in the face with something else. I'd say that I feel that more consciously than most shows. Like I feel the presence of someone guiding me, if that makes sense. No. Just like the three of them. The next generation. Those kids just beat up some bullies. Right. They're more prepared, less complacent. Eren. Eren's doing a lot of reflection. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you deserve to breathe? I mean, it makes sense. He just lost so many of the pillars of his self-identity. That pain is exactly why I think it's so hard to have this kind of self-reflection. I don't know. For the most part, it just seems like the events of the last couple hours, because <laughs> this whole show is like 10 hours long, have just taken a huge emotional toll on him. Last night, he was about to get eaten by Historia, so. And the revelations about his dad. It's just a lot happening really fast. He hasn't had time to catch up yet. There's still a similar mistake here, which is that he's taking responsibility for everything. He's still sort of putting himself in the center of the universe. But this feels a little bit better, because at least he's reflecting and adapting in the face of new information. But I think the key thing is that something better has to fit there now. There needs to be something else for him to have faith in. It can't be that the world is terrible. So what happens from here and out in this moment, I think, is crucial for him. All right, that explains why he can't walk, but not why he must drag his face. I feel like it's gonna walk through this wall like it's butter. Don't celebrate. What did I tell you? How many times do I gotta tell you people? Celebrating and hoping causes death. At least they're dedicated. Who would've thought Steam would end up being the most overpowered ability? History repeats. Oh my god, no! That is way worse than the Colossal Titan. Oh, it's making me... Oh! This is one of the worst things I've ever seen. I was not prepared. He looks more adult. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> What's in the bag? 
Gunpowder. Erwin's gambles always turn out to be like not really gambles. Oh, thank God. I never want to see this thing again. <laughs> it was so much worse than I thought. Its face is awful. He respects her conviction. The story is living for herself now. <laughs> right. It has more meaning than just her fighting. This is a very interesting time to get a Rod Ray's flashback. Did she just get his memories? It's a pretty good look for a queen, too. It's good that they saw that. No, some kind of neural link, neural network. Is anybody? <laughs> queen Historia! <laughs> you will obey me. She's the ruler of the walls. Is that Levi? There's a lot of backstory here that I'm probably not going to get today. <laughs> of all people to find him. He's done for. He has his own Titan juice? Was that Titan juice? <laughs> that was a, a weird little insert to the end there. There's a lot more to Kenny and Levi that we haven't gone into yet. I mean, he's a villain. He's a bad dude, for sure. But we're definitely going to be led down a road where we understand his actions better. It seems like the ultimate goal is to paint him in a, in a somewhat, I don't want to say sympathetic, but understandable light. Hopefully that shines some light on Levi as well, because I could always use more Levi, Levi development. But anyway, that was a disturbing episode in terms of the imagery like the faceless skinless stomachless race titan was pretty horrifying i had a very visceral reaction to that i think it was designed to be disgusting but great in that way as well and it was a very satisfying victory like i said last time i feel like the scouts feel totally different they feel reinvigorated and they feel less like you know a military branch with leadership and then lower soldiers they feel like a cohesive group of heroes they're one thing you know they're one entity working together everybody doing their part no one wavering at least in terms of the principal characters. And this is such a big victory. Like, not only did they just dispose of the largest titan that we've seen so far in the show, somewhat easily and deftly, this was a symbolic victory for them because it's their first action as the new order, I guess we'll call it. And Historia comes out looking like, you know, an actual leader with merit rather than someone who is just there by lineage. And there's this question of will the people accept her or will the people accept them? I think the implication is that the, the people are tripping over themselves looking for an excuse to go back to their complacent lives. And so this seems like it will be it. It will be enough. Which is not to say there won't be opposition, but it seems like maybe we're over the worst of it politically. Historia definitely coming out looking great this this arc, this season. She's a totally different character. I can't help but wonder if she got some new information there when she made contact with her father that might make things a little bit more complex for her or more difficult. Because there's a reason, whether or not it's justified, that this lineage chose to do things this way. There probably is a risk that the full truth brings. And then Aaron, I feel confused about him because it seems like he's having this collapse, right? My instinct is that that's a good thing, but overall he just feels confused. It, like he doesn't have anywhere better to put that energy. And he's sort of going back and forth, right? Like I was wrong to be the center of the world. And then I can be a beacon of hope. You know, it's like, what is it? His emotions feel turbulent, which makes total sense, as I said, just because of all the earth shattering revelations he's had recently. I mean, how much time has passed this season? A couple days, you know? What I feel he's missing is just something to connect to, you know, like actual understanding of the world and stakes and values that lead him to do things that are good and selfless, you know? And continuing with my my wild theory about this being sort of a meta narrative on, on the audience, that's sort of true for us as well. Like we don't really know either. I mean, we now know about this conspiracy in the plot, but we still don't really know the full stakes. And I guess our inclination is to just attach our hopes and aspirations to whoever looks best in the moment. But the truth is still being obfuscated. We don't really know. What's the truth? <laughs> Nobody is faithless. You know, everyone has faith in something. And if you don't have something good to have faith in, it all can go wrong real fast. So what does Aaron have faith in in a world where everything goes wrong and everyone betrays him and everything he thinks he knows turns out to be incomplete or misguided? After finishing this episode, my question is, what now? 
what next? So we've dealt with the immediate threat of the Titan. The matter of government seems more or less settled with Historia rising to queendom. It feels like we've gotten a somewhat thorough look at an evil that existed and we've dealt with it. But this is Attack on Titan and it's never so simple. So there's other evils out there that are going to expose themselves. And what are those going to be? Maybe it's going to be the, the things that the kings, this lineage was trying to protect people from, or maybe the outside forces. I, I really don't know. I feel like this might be a new thing starting now, a new arc kind of so very excited to see where it goes next so as much as i want to keep watching <laughs> that's it for now before the video ends i gotta give a very special thank you to all my patrons for all the constant love and support a special shout out goes to those who joined the top tier on patreon this week Towins, mr my rickman and lolly niemeyer thank you to you thank you to all my patrons thanks to everybody watching love you guys as you know and i'll see you guys next time